Welcome to The Real News Network. I am Jacqueline Lupon. The Center for American Progress claims to be a progressive organization that, according to its website, is an independent, nonpartisan policy institute that is dedicated to improving the lives of all Americans through bold, progressive ideas. But are they really independent of the Democratic Party? And are they really about pushing bold, progressive ideas for the American people when they make questionable claims about, arguably, America's favorite progressive candidate, Bernie Sanders? Here to talk with me today about the scathing letter Sanders recently sent to the Center for American Progress, what this letter means for the 2020 Democratic primary is Mike Lux. Mike is the president of the progressive nonprofit organization American Family Voices and has a consulting firm, Mike Lux Media. Mike's career in politics spans four decades, including the Clinton White House, Obama transition team, six presidential campaigns, and in the DNC. And he's the author of two books, the first being The Progressive Revolution, How the Best in America Came to Be, and the most recent was last year's How to Democrat in the Age of Trump. Mike, thank you so much for being with me today. Absolutely. I, I, I'm delighted to be on. Thank you for inviting me. So let's set the stage for what's going on with the Center for American Progress. Apparently last uh, week, uh, Bernie Sanders sent a letter to the board of directors to uh, the Center for American Progress, the Center for American Progress Action Fund, um, about an article that was published in Think Progress that suggested that he's a hypocrite because he's a millionaire. Now, I think it's important that we note that Think Progress is the website that is run by the Center for American Progress Action Fund, which is the sister organization for the Center of American, uh, for American Progress. Okay, confused <laughs> enough? <laughs> now, Sanders noted that the Think Progress piece claimed that he's been inconsistent in calling for taxing millionaires, and his growing inconsistency with the issue is because he's now a millionaire. But is reality really more mundane than this sensational piece from Think Progress made it out to be? Well, the 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 thing that I saw, I, I know there was also an article, but there was a a video that was particularly uh, bad in my judgment uh, that uh, basically said that Bernie was using uh, uh, the term millionaires less since he uh, <laughs> uh, became a millionaire, apparently, uh, through book sales, uh, that now he's focused on uh, the evils of billionaires as opposed to millionaires and billionaires. It was it was one of the the dumber, <laughs> more more trivial attacks uh, and, and just more petty attacks uh, that I've seen in a long time, uh, and uh, it, it it really didn't make any sense. If you know anything about Bernie, his policy positions hasn't changed, um, his his rhetoric hasn't changed, uh, and so it was it was just like a silly little thing uh, to uh, to attack him on, uh, and I think it. it it was a, a sign that that there is a certain attitude uh, among among some Democrats uh, to attack Bernie on this. Now, to to be fair to to Cap, and you know, I uh, which I want to do, think progress. Uh, although it's it's sort of housed there and run out of there, and they do fund it, uh, so there's a lot of ties. But um, but think progress is editorially independent. Uh, according to their policies. And they did not run this by the folks at CAP before they did it. It was, it was just something that they, uh, that they did. Uh, and, I, and I did t talk to Neera Tandon uh, after this happened, and she said she hadn't seen it. And she said she too thought it was a bad uh, video um, and, and what wasn't happy about it. So um, I, I will give the folks at CAP that, you know, uh, uh, that that deference, uh, but the the the, the piece was not uh, was never a good idea. Uh, it, you know, my my <laughs> my feeling is if if the Democrats want to want to want to compete with Bernie, go after Bernie, they ought to do it on uh, on, on issues uh, and, and on ideas rather than on dumb little uh, stuff like this. 
and it's interesting that, that you call this a, a dumb little issue because actually the truth of the matter, just to be clear about Sanders being a quote unquote millionaire, he's 77. And apparently in 2017, he and his wife uh, declared that their income was $1.1 million. And most of that was from the sale of his best-selling book, right. Our Revolution, which was published right. in 2016. Um, because the previous year in 2016, their combined income was maybe 580-something thousand dollars. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, the, you, you Yes, this this is a trivial issue, but given the clear spin, though, uh, on, on this story, is this a problem for for Sanders? Is this going to continue to dog him? Because conservative media has kind of picked this up now, or is this a problem that Think Progress and and Cap, even though Neera Tanden, uh, according to you, said that she didn't like the story either, either, are they going to have to to kind of clean this up a little bit? I think they are going to have to clean it up. I, I think they're they're working to do that. Uh, and I will say, I don't think this is a problem for Sanders at all. Uh, Bernie uh, wrote a best-selling book. He made a little bit of money because he wrote a best-selling book. So for the first time in his life, he is technically, for, for that one year, he was technically a millionaire. I don't think anybody gives a damn. I, and in fact, I think this is the kind of attack that will... Uh, firm up Bernie support among among Bernie voters because it is so trivial, it is so silly, uh, and I and I and I, you know, Cap has now uh, apologized for it, which I think is great, um, and, and I, I, I so they do have some cleanup to do, and and I hope they do it. Now the interesting thing about uh, uh, Cap is that they focused on going after Sanders for being a millionaire, but. There is also the issue of Cap's own contributions. And I think that's interesting in this story because uh, the, the Sanders wing or the left or progressive wing of the Democratic Party, that the Democratic establishment is seemingly having uh, such a problem controlling, so to speak, or at least keeping silent, pretty much learned from Sanders, I think, in 2016 to question who's funding candidates. But... Mm -hmm. Cap uh, receives funding from some pretty big corporate donors in the defense industry, from Walmart, from uh, uh, from the insurance industry, from the health insurance industry. So, is is just this story the only thing that that Cap is going to have to clear up? Are they also going to have to start answering for? Wait a minute, where is your money coming from? from some of the very supporters that they have angered with this story about Sanders? Well, I, I do think they need to do, uh, Cap, Cap needs to do full disclosure on who's given it money. They need to do full disclosure on if there are strings attached. I think those are fair questions to ask of any campaign and any institution. If you're getting a lot of money from the defense industry, from insurance, from wherever, and your positions are more in line with those industries, I think th those are very legitimate questions. Um, you know, again, Cap, Cap gets money from a lot of different sources. They get money from, uh, from a lot of sort of classic liberal donors who have no, you know, uh, no, no, no ideological drum to beat or anything like that. So uh, I, I don't want to say that, that uh, all or even most of their money is is questionable, but I do think they need to be thoughtful uh, if they're if they're when they're taking their positions that that they should that they be clear uh, that uh, uh, you know that they're not in line with uh, some of these kinds of donors, um, and, and so I I think it's a legitimate issue for critics to raise, um, and I and I think Cap needs to uh, needs to speak to it. So finally, Mike, I wanted to ask you about uh, a specific response from the Center for American Progress to Sanders' letter uh, to them. They claimed in an article in The Hill that uh, Sanders was trying to muzzle journalists with his criticism of uh, this article published by Think Progress and this video and the suggestion that Sanders is a hypocrite because he's a millionaire. 
Um, this is an interesting uh, accusation to level against Sanders, especially given what's going on now with Julian Assange, where the U.S. government really is trying to silence journalists for exposing corruption in the U.S. government. Um, this is also an interesting time where we've learned that the DCCC has demanded a loyalty oath of vendors uh, to, for them to promise that they won't support challengers of Democratic incumbents for House seats in the coming midterms. Is this more, this, this claim from Cap that Sanders is trying to muzzle them, is this more of just kind of this Democratic uh, Party establishment uh, pushing back or trying to silence themselves or to stop the progress of progressives from making more of a headway into the Democratic Party? Uh, or, or is this something else that, that's a little bit more concerning? Well, again, I, I think that was a dumb, uh, uh, you know, answer or, or a dumb statement by uh, the folks at, uh, and again, I, I think it was Think Progress, uh, you know, uh, uh, as opposed to CAP. Uh, uh, the, the problem is that this is, the, there's a complicated role here. Uh, and it's one that I understand. It's it's advoc It's what it's what people call advocacy journalism. Uh, Cap is a think tank. Cap does lobbying, and Cap has Think Progress, which is a journalistic enterprise, all under the same rubric, right? And so they're 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 playing multiple roles, which which things get complicated when you're when you're playing multiple roles. Um, and and I, I don't have any, any problem with advocacy journalism as long as you stayed up front, you know, things like who your donors are and all of that. I, you know, I, th I think it's fair enough. Um, but um, but I think to say that you're trying to muzzle journalists in this context when this wasn't a journalistic kind of endeavor, this video, this was just like a petty little personal attack on Bernie. I, I mean, it, it, like I say, it. it, it it was not well done. It was it was stupid. It wasn't like investigative journalism. Bernie has released his taxes and is fully fully admits that for one year he got slightly over the million million dollar mark. Mm -hmm. uh, so it wasn't investigative journalism. It was just like a petty little personal uh, attack on him. Uh, and and uh, I think uh, uh, I th I think to say that it's muzzling journalism to push back on that. When it was a direct political attack, uh, it, you know, is is wrong, and and I think it was a, it, uh, you know, it was not a a, a good thing for uh, for Cap or Think Progress to to push back on. Um, I think I think Bernie, when when attacked, Bernie has every right to answer, uh, to to push back, uh, and and to say he shouldn't do that. Uh, I I just think is uh, is wrong. So finally, Mike, I, I got to ask you from. Uh, you quoted. You said something in your in your latest book, "How to Democrat in the Age of Trump." Um, first, the bridge between grassroots progressives and the party's leaders need to be rebuilt. This is from your book. Party leaders need to genuinely listen to their grassroots rather than battling or ignoring them. Democratic leaders need to learn what the Republicans have understood for decades now, that to win a political, that to win, a political party needs enthusiasm from its activists and base voters. That means a message that embraces the passions, values, and agenda of grassroots leaders. How do the Democratic uh, Party, the Democratic candidates, the DCCC, the DNC, CAP, how does the Democratic apparatus get to that point in the history of their political life, in the current environment from where we are now and these kinds of uh, forced errors being committed by the party? Well, I, you know, ironically, I actually think it's, it's already happening to a, to a degree certainly on the presidential level, if you look at the candidates and what they're saying about issues, how they're talking about issues, uh, the, the number of them that have moved in a progressive direction compared to candidates in past elections, I think this is the most uh, progressive field of candidates that we've ever had. Uh, and so 
you see it happening in, in front of our eyes. And I think it's a great, uh, exciting thing. I think the old guard of the party needs to let that happen, needs to understand how important it is and not do these kind of petty uh, personal things. Like, like I say, the, the, the best way to answer Bernie, if, if you want to uh, beat Bernie Sanders, uh, you should have a debate with him on the issues about what's going to work best. Uh, about about the, 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 the best way to uh, reach common goals. Um, you should assure voters that the Democratic Party is free of the influence of, of big corporate money. Uh, you, you, should, you should move in that direction. And I think a lot of the candidates are getting that, even if not all of the, all of the old school uh, Democratic groups are. Well, Mike, thank you so much for joining me today to talk about this issue. And uh, we really appreciate your perspective and your insight. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Uh, I've, I've enjoyed the interview. And thank you so much, everyone, for joining me here on The Real News Network. I am Jacqueline Lukeman in Baltimore.